Trawler Specialist Jeff Merrill in Portsmouth, Rhode Island to show you the Katie Krogan 58 Tapestry. Tapestry behind me is hull number nine in the series. She's a full displacement, long range passage maker designed by the great people at Katie Krogan. Katie Krogan is one of my favorite types of boats. This boat is owned and operated by a couple. It's right on the high end of a couple's comfortable range for, for cruising and operating, but they've really enjoyed it. They are the second owners. She's gonna be in Rhode Island until we find a buyer for her. A lot of great equipment, which we'll go through and I'll show you. Nice teak decks back in the cockpit along the side deck. It's a wide body arrangement, so you have the starboard side deck you can walk along. Up on the foredeck, you have a hydraulic windlass. You also have AVT active fin stabilizers. That's a raised pilot house boat. Two staterooms down below, two heads. Very easy engine room, a couple of machinery spaces. There's a lot of things to show you. We won't get it all done in this video, but we'll make a good attempt. Let's go take a look around. Thanks for joining me today. Couple ways to get on board tapestry. The easiest one is here on the starboard side deck. This side deck goes up forward, up to the Portuguese bridge. You can also enter the door to the galley. And then I'm gonna come back aft to the wing door to get back to the cockpit. Fuel fill here on the starboard side. All the activity you need is on the starboard side deck. And then to get back into the cockpit, go on the boat, right back here. You can also board from the swim platform if you wanted to. And there's a door on the port side of the cockpit as well. Come on aboard. The back deck or cockpit area is very big on the Katie Krogan 58. The overhead is tall, it's wide, it comes all the way back to the transom. You have enclosures on this particular boat, Isinglass, there's also shades to come down so they have versatility. This is an all weather room with this Isinglass enclosure in it. The cap rail is all painted. There's a boarding door on the port side. Notice that it goes all the way down. That's, that's a nice feature on there. Haas pipes for mooring lines. The transom in the center, has another boarding door from the swim platform. So if you're out swimming or coming in by dinghy, that's your easy access there. Also right to the side of the door is a hot and cold freshwater shower for rinsing off if you go for a swim. In the center back here is the access to the lazarette hatch. This is all teak in here. And then I have a console forward with a sink and some drawers and storage in here. This is a great place for cleaning supplies back out aft. Standing on top of the lazarette lid right here. And then to go inside, Undo the dog, it's a double door, come right inside. Great to be inside Tapestry, coming through the split doors here. I made a mistake outside. I think those are easy to see clear, not eyes and glass, but either way, it doesn't really matter too much. So we have the two doors. There is a phantom screen here to prevent bugs. These are also pretty cool. These are little slides so that you can block off the light. Carpeted parquet wood floor, lambkins here on the windows. These are opening windows on both sides with the shades, some storage lockers here. They did have some chairs here, which they've removed. So if you buy this boat, you'll want to put a couch or some chairs here. Over on the starboard side is a very large L-shaped settee with a movable table. It can go high, low, and it can seat four or open up. I've been told they've had 12 people for dinner eating lobster here. The old TV locker right here is now for storage. There's stereo equipment down below, and they have a fixed flat screen TV over on the starboard side. Teak handrails over top. This area we call the buffet. There's an opening port light here with one of those closures. Again, you can block off the light. Some different shelves. There's storage back outboard. Drawers, storage underneath. This is another big storage area. This one they've modified. They've added some shelves here. They also added a special little locker door here so you don't have to just go through the top to get into this little storage space here. They found some space on board that they've taken advantage of. From here, I can go up to the pilot house, I can go down to the staterooms, or I can come into the galley. So let's take a look inside the galley. A lot of surface area, Corian countertops. I love these grab rails here on the corner. You have a fiddle on here. There's the the raised side here so that you aren't seeing all the, the food being cooked. They've added the tile splash guard on the back. So it's a GE profile microwave convection oven. And then this is a home appliance, beautiful professional Viking four burner propane cooktop and propane oven. So your food stays cooking uniformly. Electric can kind of be a little bit iffy that way. Some drawers. Again, the parquet wood floor continues in through here double basin sink, lots of storage lockers up above. They're all louvered for better airflow. Another storage locker here. 
a trash compactor, dishwasher, storage, drawers, and Gen Air freezer, fridge, good size cold storage there. I'm going to show you what it's like to go outside. So they've got the, the phantom screens would not fit here because of the sizing. So they've got this other type of mesh that has magnets along here on the vertical. This is a Dutch door. It also has that closures. And then you can just come right here and head outside to the side deck. The starboard side deck has access from the galley here or from the cockpit. But again, for handling lines, for fuel filling, this is a great deck. You come up four steps to get onto the Portuguese bridge deck level. There is a large boarding gate here, so you can board a, a tall dock. Dutch door into the pilot house over on this side. And then there's some good railing. There's a good handrail here. And as I get up to the forward corner, you'll see that there is a docking station. So from here, I have my bow thruster control. And I also have my twin engine control. So I can look and see where I am fore and aft to do the controls for docking the boat. Very easy here. Good Portuguese bridge. Wide, some storage lockers in it. Handrails up top. And this Portuguese bridge goes all the way over to the other side with more lockers. There are two doors at the center of the Portuguese bridge that open up. Nice sand, non-skid catches over the owner cabin forward. Built-in storage boxes on both sides, which are also double as seats. Freeman hatch here, access to the chain locker. This is the Maxwell hydraulic windlass. It's a horizontal. You have two anchors you can deploy. You also have a capstan on top. There is a bow tow eye on this boat that actually is above the waterline and it has this large mantis claw here. So you can lower your scope and use that for at anchor. Shore power connections up here. And I don't think I mentioned, but back in the cockpit, there were two Glendinning reels. So you have shore power forward and aft, which is a great feature for a boat this size. Freshwater wash down so you can rinse off your chain. And then they come back into the Portuguese bridge. It's good and safe. Close this off. You see how high and protected it is. And then from this side, I would come over here and I can walk along the front of the pilot house, along to the side, go up a couple of steps to get to the boat deck where the dinghy is, and then from there up to the flybridge. Come up to the boat deck. Along the port side, there's a couple of steps as you pass the pilot house. Come up those steps, and you have a wide walkway. Once you get up here, there's very good railing. It's up nice and tall. You have weather cloths for a little privacy. It's an expansive boat deck. Back aft, there is a magma barbecue propane bottle. And then you have a separate walled-off area back aft, which is a great feature uh, for safety. Nautical structures, Euro 1200 crane. You have the AV inflatable dinghy with a console. 60 horsepower Yamaha. There's a gate right here. And then the mast can be lowered. If you want to do the great loop, you can lower the mast. It comes into this little cradle location right here. Uh, there's even a winch up on the uh, the brow to give you some purchase for uh, pulling that mast down. As you come back forward, big storage locker in here, extra gear, another smaller one over here. Here's the mast. You can see that it's on that tabernacle hinge base here. Coming up the steps. There is a L-shaped seat over on the port side, so your guests can be talking to you while you're operating the boat. Two helm chairs, a nice feature on a boat like this, so two of you can be up here driving the boat, talking to your guests. Forward is the flat deck above the pilot house where there's several antennas mounted. Also some hatches giving some light and ventilation to the pilot house. All of your electronics that you need right here. Compass, chart plotter radar, depth, speed, VHF, wind, uh, your engine control shifts, the two engines, closed circuit TV, spotlight, AVT, track stabilizers, bow thruster. Everything I need is right here. And up here, up forward, this is the self-tailing winch with a fair lead there for lowering the mast. So great setup here, a lot of good extra space, very tall folding bimini above me, and I have a commanding view. I can really see everything 
from here, including the anchor rollers when I'm dropping the windlass, if I need to do it up here. I really love this outside deck area. The boat deck and the flybridge is superb on the Krogan 58. It's an exceptional pilot house on the Katie Krogan 58. You come up a couple of steps from the entry level. As you do so, you pass the electrical breaker panel and it's behind some louver doors. So it's very convenient but sort of tucked out of the way as well. There are two doors. They're both Dutch doors opening on either side, and they both have phantom screens. Again, for bug protection. Overhead handrails, two hatches overhead as well. Both sides mirror each other. There's a big surface area if you want to lay some charts out there. Good deep drawers. Again, more storage lockers for supplies. Uh, wind speed and depth right up here two Garmin displays, and you can put multiple different you know, radar, chart plotter, closed circuit TV. You can modify those to suit. Uh, there's a Ritchie compass up forward, and then you have your bow thruster, hydraulic bow thruster. There's a panel here for the closed circuit TV, ABT track stabilizers, uh, another display, your engine controls. There are electrical breaker panels for Navcom up forward. Big stainless steel destroyer wheel, a Kalenberg horn, all of your lights for outside, your navigation running lights are on a separate panel, wiper controls. There's an iPad here for navigation, two flow scans for fuel. Again, more surface area for charts, searchlight right over here, more drawers over on that side. And then overhead, you have the two engine displays, rudder angle indicator and VHF radio. The Stid Helm chair is very comfortable, great. Uh, and then seating area, if you're one of the guests, there are two opening port lights back aft, and then this L-shaped seating area with a large table. One clever thing that these guys did is they found some space here, and they put some storage lockers underneath the flooring. That's not normally accessible. So that was another great idea of found space. There is storage underneath the footrest here and at the helm little counter area back behind and then the seating is very comfortable. You can pull out some bars on both sides to make the table wider. Do that on the other side as well. Great visibility from back here and from the helm chair. This is a great pilot house. It's fun to be operating the boat or to be a guest on board. The lower level is below the pilot house and the foredeck. There are three primary spaces down at the slower level. The key feature when you first arrive is the open office area. This is fantastic. If you need to get some work done while you're offshore or while you're still cruising, bookshelves, a lot of surface area for a desk here. There's a chair built in, opening port lights, drawers, and then this is a special storage area. There's, of course, a wine cooler, which you probably could do that at five o'clock. Storage underneath here, there's been sewing machine that's been kept in this area, the slide out right here, so you have some spare parts or whatever you want to put in there. A lot of good use of the space here. From here, I would go to the guest stateroom on the starboard side. There are two bunk beds in the guest stateroom. I said bunk beds, two single berths, not bunk beds, two individual bunks outboard of each other with a big walkway in between, drawers underneath, opening port lights outboard, a large hanging locker forward. From this room, you could go back out to the hallway or up forward to their private head and shower. So let me show you that. Behind this door, which is held by a magnet, you have a good size shower, bifold door, seat on it. There's a hanging locker behind this door, and then you have a sink and a head. Vanity for a mirror, and then I'm going to show you the washer and dryer back in the hallway. This is where you have your laundry appliances with washer and dryer. And then up to the owner cabin, forward. This is a palatial room, and look at the beautiful cherry wood. It's very well matched. Got a good overhead on the top. Large bed here, island berth, reading lights on both sides, opening hatches, port lights on both sides, 
changing seat. They even use this as their laundry hamper down below. There's storage below the bed. There's also some drawers. There is a large bureau here with a mirror, more drawers here, hanging locker, hanging locker, and then the owners have their own head and shower, which is right over here. Again, a full stand-up shower, high fold door, changing seat or sit-down seat, opening port light, sink, another opening port light, medicine cabinets, corian counter with a lip, sink, Tecma head. So all of this is the lower level. From here, you also have some machinery spaces down below, which I'll show you in a minute. And then you, this is also the easy way to get to the engine room. So we'll come back to the engine room in a bit, it's right down here. But I want to show you the two machinery spaces and what's in them next. Underneath the carpet at the bed landing in the owner's cabin is the forward machinery space. Four steps down, it's about 41 inches where I'm standing, and I'm going to show you what's going on down below here. So you have a, a ladder that takes you down a couple of steps. And then from down below here, on the aft area, that is the holding tank. You can see some of the lines have been done. The owner has done some different plumbing things to make the pump out easier. There's your Spectra water maker and a lot of the water maker appliances there. You can see there is a bilge pump sump down here. You can actually sit outboard pretty comfortably here. Certainly not stand up, but it's certainly comfortable. More machinery space. And then up forward, you actually have a Freeman hatch that gives you access up to the bow thruster tunnel. Let's see if I can get that. Hold that there. Turn the light on. So up in here, there's the bow thruster tunnel. You have hydraulics, packages, port side and starboard side for the windlass and the bow thruster. So pretty clever space. There's also storage underneath the bed, but I wanted to show you the forward machinery space and we'll walk down the hall and I'll show you the aft machinery space next. The midship machinery space is right opposite the office desk area as you come into the lower level. A couple steps here. It's about 45 inches deep. As the boat goes further aft, it gets to be a little bit deeper. A couple steps here, hot water tank. I'm gonna show you what's down here. So back on the port side, you can see the active fin stabilizer. So this is a stabilizer chamber in here. Right there, air conditioning pump, air conditioning strainer, intake, transformer. Also have the two of the cruise air units here, a Seagull all boat fresh water system, Torrid 30 gallon hot water tank. Another air conditioning compressor back aft. Groco uh, pressure for your fresh water. Charger. The other active fin stabilizer. Xantrex inverter. Batteries here. And then you have the fresh water tank forward. So great space, easy to get around in here. And a lot of important stuff to be looking after down in this machinery space. The engine room on the Katie Krogan 58 gives you a lot of great access. Very important to be able to come down in here. They have an excellent cooling system. They use a Delta T to keep the air cooler here because you've got two big beasts, two big John Deere engines creating heat. As you enter the engine room, there's a workbench with a toolbox on it, an ESI fuel polishing system, dual ray cores. As you come around and on the port forward bulkhead, some battery select switches. There's a reversal uh, oil change system. Uh, back underneath that bench is a manifold that's a custom design in here for a supply. There's return valves up the top. Forward of the engine room, access to the intake through hull and strainers. Again, very good access uh, here. The well in the middle gives you some good room for working around. Uh, this is an aqua drive system. So aqua drives isolates and keeps the vibration down. You have aqua drive mounts and also the aqua drive plate back here. Transmission power takeoff, 20 kW generator with a power takeoff. 
and a 12 kW northern lights, so two northern lights generators, same spare parts. Back behind me is outboard as an air conditioning unit. One of the great features that uh, this boat has done is when you are done running in seawater, it's a good idea to run some fresh water through the engine. So they put this apparatus right here, hook up a hose to it, turn on the hose, run the engine, and it circulates fresh water through it. But they took one took it one step further. They also rigged this up so with that same hose, you could put it down into the bilge, and then with the valve, you can you can take the bilge water out by running it through the main engine. So it serves as an auxiliary bilge pump while it's cooling your engine. Hopefully you won't have to get into that, but they've thought about that. Speaking about other things that uh, they've done, and this is pretty cool, I hadn't seen this before. There's a cooler in the engine room. Right here. Now, this might be good if you're working on the boat, not you're underway and you wanna have a, a nice cold drink, but this is actually a spill kit. So they've got towels and absorbs, all kinds of stuff in the event of a problem. But the real benefit of it is that back here, you have an excellent seat. I had that little stool right here. Now I can get to things. They've added some, some trick ideas for accessing the through holes that are outboard so you don't have to go back there. They've rigged up some gear on top of the generator, both sides for those outboard through holes. Tide shaft seals back here. And from here, you can go back to the lazarette. So let's go take a look back there. Through the collision bulkhead, the big dog door, you get into the lazarette. There is a hatch overhead, and this would give you access up to the cockpit area. And they added a slide bolt lock here. So for security, you can lock this off. In the event of some sort of uh, danger, you could secure this area as well. Great storage area. There's some bins over forward. They've built some beautiful storage racks here. Of course, your steering system's behind. There are two Glendinning shore power reels over here. Breakers, fuses, more storage shelves, steering, exhaust. There's this really good area. There's a lot of oil um, bottles in here, reserves for it. So easy to get to. And I kind of feel like I'm in the International Space Station here as I'm coming back towards you. So come on and take a look at this lazarette. It's pretty cool. Tapestry is a great boat. I hope you have a better appreciation of some of the features. Again, it's impossible to show you everything on this boat. There's a lot to discover, and the best way to do that is to get on board. We do showings by appointment only. You can contact me or my co-listing broker, Tim True. Our information's on the screen. It's really a special boat. In this market, there's so much demand. We expect that this boat shouldn't be around for too long. For the right couple, this is a great cruising boat for long distance. You also can do some coastal cruising. It's a great platform, wonderful platform for your family. I look forward to hearing from you. Give Tim or I a call. You can send us a text or an email, and let's get you on board. You can see Tapestry with your own eyes. Thank you very much for your time, and thanks for watching this video. Hey, great to be underway again out on the water. Love it out here. Thank you very much for watching the video. We have a couple of things you can do. One thing is you can click the bell to get a reminder when we post the next video. We love it when you give us those thumbs up. And then you can subscribe by clicking the button below. Once you've seen a couple of videos, you might also want to check out some of the other ones. So you can click on one of these videos on the side. Thanks. We hope to have you come back here soon. And we'll be putting up more content shortly.